Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for uh, the commemoration of Channing Moore Williams from uh, Washington Courthouse, Ohio, All Saints Church. Channing Moore Williams was an Episcopal Church ministry missionary, later bishop in China and Japan. Williams was a leading figure in the establishment of the Anglican Church in Japan. His commemoration in the liturgical calendar is the 2nd of December. Uh, he was born in Richmond, Virginia, the fifth child of a lawyer and, um, and delegate John Green Williams and his wife Mary Ann Crignan. Um, Bishop Moore May, uh, Mead ordained Williams as deacon at St. Paul's Church Alexandria on the 1st of July in 1855, along with John Liggins and other graduating classmates. <coughs> Williams served briefly at that church, but he and Liggins also traveled to New York for interviews with the Foreign Missions Board. By November, the aspiring missionaries sailed towards Shanghai, China, to join Bishop Boone. They reached their destination almost eight months later, on the 28th of June, 1856. Having sailed around South America and with stops at Rio de Janeiro and Sydney, Australia. At Shanghai, the new missionaries first needed to learn the local Wu dialect, as well as Mandarin and the literary, literary Wenli language. They soon learned that of about the 20 missionaries who had traveled to Shanghai to work under Bishop Boone since 1845, only about half remained. Many experienced health problems, as well as the strains of cultural adjustment and physical dangers. Soon they were able to substitute for the British chaplains who assisted foreign sailors, and by December Williams could read prayers in Chinese well enough to substitute for the bishop. Bishop Boone ordained both Williams and Liggins to the priesthood on the 11th of January in 1857. They soon began making missionary journeys to various cities in the Yangtze River Delta from their Shanghai base. Meanwhile, in 1856, three years after Commodore Matthew Perry's four warship entry into Edo Bay, Townsend Harris, a devout Episcopalian, had become the first American consul in Japan. Two years later, senior mission, missionary to China, Reverend Edward Sile, and three chaplains of other denominations had accompanied W.B. Reed, the U.S. ambassador to China, on his voyage to Nagasaki. In 1859, together with his fellow VTS graduate, Reverend John Liggins, a British-born missionary who had suffered a severe beating from an anti-foreign mob in Changshu in April, as well as repeated fevers and had been sent to Nagasaki to recover, Williams was assigned by the Foreign Mission Board to begin missionary work in Japan. Williams arrived in Nagasaki, joining Reverend Liggins on June 26, 1859. Due to, to long-standing government restrictions on the teaching of Christianity since the arrival of Jesuit missionaries in the 16th century and the need to learn Japanese, Reverend Liggins and Williams' religious duties were initially limited to ministering to American and British residents of the Nagasaki Foreign Settlement, as well as visit to visiting sailors. However, they could also serve as interpreters, as well as teach English. Reverend Liggins compiled a Japanese-English phrasebook before ill health forced his departure in February of 1860. A medical missionary, Dr. Ernest Schmidt, arrived, but ill health also forced his departure, and a missionary teacher, Miss Jeanette Conover, also returned to Shanghai due to Japanese anti-foreigner sentiment in 1863. The American Civil War also complicated matters. By 1864, Reverend Williams and a Dutch Reformed priest were the only Protestant missionaries remaining in Japan. Reverend Williams continued his limited duties and began translating the Gospels. His first recorded baptism of a Japanese convert, a Kumamoto samurai named Shuma, Shuma, Shumura Tsukiyemon, was not until February of 1866. Bishop Boone died in 1864, and the first post-war general convention elected Williams as his successor. 
He sailed for the U.S. and on October 3rd, 1866, during a meeting of the Board of Missions in New York City, Williams was consecrated Episcopal Bishop of China and Japan in St. John's Chapel. Presiding Bishop Hopkins led the consecration, joined by Bishops Lee, Johns, Payne, Potter, Whipple, and Talbot. Bishop Williams remained in the United States that winter, traveling to both northern and southern cities to tell American clergy and people about the great missionary fields in China and Japan. Right Reverend Williams returned initially to China, but in 1868 returned to Japan, since he had learned the language and no other Protestant missionaries volunteered for that duty. Although numerous mis Catholic missionaries continued, the government banished 4,000 Japanese Catholic converts to Yezo Island, later renamed Hokkaido. In 1869, Bishop Williams settled at Osaka, a 30-hour sail from China. In 1869 and the following spring baptized four more converts. Meanwhile, Americans tried diplomatic channels to legalize Christian missionary work. In 1869, two outposts had been established by the Church Missionary Society in Nagasaki and the American Mission Board at Yokohama. He visited China in a yearly basis after settling in Tokyo. In May 1871, Williams finally received assistance as Reverend Arthur Morris of New Jersey arrived in Osaka and began learning the language. He progressed enough to open the, a boys' school the following fall. Also, the Japanese government finally repealed its anti-Christian law in 1872 and allowed banished Christians to return to their villages. In December 1873, Bishop Williams relocated to to. to Tsukiji, Tokyo, and he was made a bishop of Edo. In February 1874, he founded a private school there, St. Paul's School, which ultimately became Rikyo University. In 1887, in partnership with Bishop Edward Vickersteth, Williams worked to unite the various national Anglican missionary efforts into the Nippon Saikokai, the Holy Catholic Church, the Anglican Church in Japan. Williams stepped down two years later to make way for a younger generation of missionaries. The General Convention chose Bishop John McKim as his successor, and he returned to New York for cons consecration in 1893. Williams remained in Japan, moving to Kyoto to evangelize in the Kensai region. Williams returned to America in failing health in 1908, two years before his death in Richmond in 1910. He's buried with his family at Hollywood Cemetery. That's quite the story, and quite the history. Let us prepare for worship. Watch, for you know not when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and you find you asleep. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Going to stick with just, um, oh, we've got, and yeah, I'm just going to do the first section of the psalm for today. The very first section of Psalm 119. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees and seek him with all their hearts, who never do any wrong, but always walk in his ways. You laid down your commandments that we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame when I regard all your commandments. I, thank, I will thank you with an unfeigned heart. When I have learned your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. 
In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountain, and shall be raised above the hills. All nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the, mount, to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. For you have forsaken the ways of your people. O house of Jacob, indeed they are full of diviners, from the east and of soothsayers like the Philistines, and they clasp hands and with foreigners. Their hand is filled with silver and gold, and there is no end to their treasures. Their land is filled with horses, and there is no end to their chariots. Their land is filled with idols, they bow down to the work of their hands. And what their own, and with their what their own fingers have made, and so people are humbled, and any one every one is brought low. Do not forgive them. Enter into the rock and hide in the dust from the terror of the Lord, and from the glory of His Majesty. The haughty eyes of people shall be brought low, and the pride of every one shall be humbled, and the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. Here ends the reading. This actually points out one of the understandings that, that the early people of Israel had about the location of heaven. They, they believed that it was physically located in the sky above them, um, which is why we have things like condemning the cedars of Lebanon for being too tall. Um, the reason for that is they believed that they actually reached into heaven. And that was the t problem with the Tower of Babel as well, is that the people were trying to build something that reached not just into the sky, but into heaven. So they were trying to go into the place that was God's alone. Um, the only place where it seems that that is allowed are mountains. And those are the places where where. Um, special messengers for God um, could go to get close enough to actually speak with him. And we see this over and over again. So this idea here that, that the temple in Jerusalem will be raised up so that it actually reaches heaven and is a bridge between God and God's people. Um, that's what that's about. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 13 to 20. We also constantly give thanks to God for this, that when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human would, but as, it what, as what it really is, God's word, which is also at work in you believers. For you, brothers and sisters, become imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus, that are in Judea, for you suffered the same things from your own compatriots as they did from the Jews who killed both the Lord Jesus and the prophets, and drove us out. They displease God and oppose everyone by hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles, so that they may be saved. Thus they have constantly been filling up the measure of their sins, but God's wrath has overtaken them at last. As for us, brothers and sisters, when for a short time we were made orphans by being separated from you in person, not in heart, we longed with great eagerness to see you face to face. For we wanted to come to you. Certainly I, Paul, wanted to again and again, but Satan blocked our way. For what is our hope or joy or crown or boasting before the Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not you? Yes, you are in you are our glory and a joy. Here ends the reading.
here we have a continuation of the uh, of the struggle between um, the newly emerging church and the others of their faith that didn't believe in Jesus, because it really still is. Yes, they're starting to separate, but it still is the Jews who who are Christian and the Jews who aren't Christian. So the Jews who believe Jesus was the Messiah and the Jews who believe Jesus wasn't the Messiah, um, they're still Jews. Uh, so we have this setting against because they're the the ones who believed in Christ um, were incredibly persecuted and were um, their worship was illegal which is part of why the other Jews um, were so hostile to them because they were very worried that 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 would spread that that if the Christians became too much of a problem for the Romans then the Romans would outlaw outlaw all Judaism I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ his only son our lord he was conceived by the power of the holy spirit and born of the virgin mary he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. Well, I, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I had a little bit from a different version of the Apostles' Creed creep in there <laughs> from my memory, from my youth. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the, new, to the life immortal, through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. The Lord guided the righteous in right paths and showed him the kingdom of God. O God, who in your providence called Channing Moore Williams to the ministry of the, this church and gave him the gifts and the perseverance to preach the gospel in new lands, inspire us by his commit, example and prayers to commit our talents to your service confident that you uphold those who you call. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for the, all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you and I'll see you online tomorrow.